when we had four vertices here, we called it tetrahedral. When we had just these three base vertices, we called it trigonal pyramidal. Then we had trigonal bipyramidal, and we even had octahedral, which could have had another name. And I want to kind of run down how that naming makes sense. Feel free to skip this little bit of information uh, if you're easily confused. This doesn't really matter, but I think it's kind of interesting to note. So the first one we had of that type was our center atom, 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 out of the page and into the page, and then over. This would be trigonal planar, except that non-bonding pair is what forced it into that orientation. And if you look, we called this trigonal pyramidal. And what it really is, is it's like you have a pyramid, right? A three-sided base pyramid. Somehow that looks worse, not gonna lie. But it's like you have a three-sided base pyramid, all right? And then we can move up to trigonal bipyramidal, which I think may make sense once you see it. We had a central atom, one above, one below, into the page, out of the page, on the plane of the page. And this is a situation where we had trigonal, meaning, once again, three-sided base for our pyramid, but we had one above, and then I'll try and draw this in another color, and one below. So a three-sided three base pyramid, one above, one below, is bipyramidal, right? Trigonal, right? So we do end up with both of those as trigonal, which brings up what I was saying about octahedral, which I have promptly lost. Here it is. It seems that we could rename octahedral if we needed to, and n nobody really calls it that, but we have a square-based pyramid, which we call square pyramidal, and we have one above and one below. And let me draw that in. One out one out and one in the same plane. I realize that looks terrible. That's fine. We also had one below. Following that same reasoning, we have our pyramid with a square base and there it is going to the top and we also have that same thing going on. So there's our square base pyramid, square pyramidal and then when we have an atom attached at the bottom, we get this eight-sided figure, octahedral, which technically could be square bipyramidal. So this is octahedral. And I'll just put a squiggly line, square bipyramidal. Anyway, I think it's kind of interesting to note how that naming scheme works. This atom is not attached to this atom. They're all attached to the bottom atom. But then how the three-dimensional uh, surfaces work out is where that naming comes from. So what would be next? Three sides in the center, four sides in the center, five sides in the center. And this isn't one you see super often. But since it comes up, it's always good to address it. And that is you have your central atom one above and one below, and then you have five atom, atoms in that central plane. And we are limited by my abilities here, but we have one there, one there, one there, then coming out again and going in again. And we have pentagonal bipyramidal. All right, and for our pentagonal bipyramidal, so this is what it looks like for our pentagonal bipyramidal. If we needed to see those pyramids, it's a five-sided base There's the upper pyramid and then
there's our lower base. So we have pentagonal bipyramidal. And I will mention as we start to take things off of that, we're going to remove um, above and below first. So we'd end up with pentagonal pyramidal, pentagonal planar, etc. Our bond angles as we look at it, and it's certainly not worth memorizing, but this right here, we would have 72 degrees. And then we've got for these things, 90 degrees and 180 if you were counting top to bottom.